Welcome to lesson three. Don't tell me you never thought of this. AI can write best for you. So as playwright. So in this video, I'll show you how you can make playwright write best for you. So let's crack on. All right. So let's imagine that we have got a to-do list like this one, where we normally type our to-do items like buy a milk box or uh, get an admission to university or simply write write some test now the question is how would you test this to-do list normally if you are writing the test yourself you have to go through the whole documentation multiple times find the right uh, selectors find the right uh, attributes and you have to do like an inspect element like you do right click inspect try to find the name of the element and class of the element and then you hook up things accordingly what if i tell you all this can be done by playwright itself so this is a lesson where we look into playwright and if you go to the docs there's this third item called generating tests so if you click on generating tests you will come to this documentation where it will tell you how to record the test and how to generate locators so underneath it you can see this example so i'm going to copy this so if you remember we already had this project where we were working so we already have this working directory uh, in visual studio code so if you open your visual studio code it will look like this all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna open the terminal so on the top in the menu click on new terminal this will open the terminal window and here you can just copy paste that command and what this command does is it uses playwright code gen method and then it takes a url of the website so first we'll try with the to-do list so i'm gonna click on the, uh, i'm gonna enter that command this opens two windows okay so one is the browser and another is the playwright inspector now let's look at the playwright inspector very closely so it says import test expect from playwright so that's just it's importing test and expect so we have got test and we are not doing any expect at the moment it is also taking page as a context um, so we will come to this page thing in in a bit no not in this lecture it would be in the it's because it's an advanced topic we will cover it in the fixtures and then we have got await page.go to and it's going to this website so now when as soon as we enter this command it has already written a test for us this test is basically going to the to-do list and then it's getting redirected to uh, to-do list for slash hash so again because it's a computer who's writing the test computer doesn't know where should it go first so this line is not needed at all which we can fix it later on now it's waiting for me to like start recording so i'm gonna record and then i'm gonna click on here oh sorry it was already recording as you can see it has created out so i'm gonna click on the record again and now you can see the red items which are getting selected so wherever i'm moving the mouse it that gets selected so i'm going to click on the to-do list and as you can see on the right hand side it generated the line of code of clicking to the to-do list now i'm going to write writing my first test so that's my first to-do item and on the right you can see that it has already generated it for me so i'm gonna do another item for example buy a milk uh, box and then on the right it created that as well so now i'm going to stop the recorder at this point and i'm going to copy this whole test and come back to my test suite and write a new test so uh, for example to do dot spec dot ts that's the file name that i'm creating and i'm going to copy the whole code so as you can see my editor can detect that we are not using any expects so that's fine for now and if you have the Visual Studio Code plugin, you will see this play button. Let's try to run it. So it went through the whole test. It didn't fail. So it says that the test has passed. What if we had a different value? For example, get by placeholder. What if it didn't find that placeholder? So le let me just change that to something that would not exist on that website so blah 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 foo bar so we know that this text does not exist on that website i'm going to run this test again 
and now you can see that it's taking slightly longer than the previous time. Error messages like this one, which is called timeout. So timeout does not equal to a success or failure of the test. Timeout is an error. So how do we fix this timeout? We can just undo the change and now it can find all the fields. But again, the question is, how do we actually test if the item existed or not? So let's go back because I want to use the expect command and check if the values that are entered are, are there or not. So this was more like a setup for the test. Now, how do I actually check, check the value? So I'm going to go back to the record button and I'm going to look at this. And as soon as I click on it, as you, as you can see, wherever I'm clicking, it just goes and clicks, creates a line over there. So await page get by text. So get by text, it, it is this text. So it is getting the value by the text, not by the locator. So how do we get it by the particular locator? So there are other options over here. So when I click on the second icon, it says get by text. So this is a locator picker. The next one is assert visibility. So this is the third option. So first is record locator and then assert visibility. So I'm going to look at this assert visibility and you can see on my right, it has generated an expect saying expect page dot get by text to be visible, meaning that that text is on the page. So we can potentially copy this line from here and put it into our test to actually validate that this is visible. So I'm going to rerun the test. And as you can see, it went through all the lines and it says one test passed. Now, if I change this to two, oh, sorry, uh, let's, let's say, let's try to find another two, So the last one that we had was to be visible. So if we, let, let's see what other options we have got by looking at to be. So you can, you can do this yourself to be hidden. Let, let's try that. Basically I want the test to fail and see what, what it looks like. So you know that it is visible because we have already verified it in the code generation. So when it failed, uh, it is giving us another timeout warning but here it says expected hidden received visible so this is a more useful information so when you actually use the expect in the test you get a useful error and these are the error messages that we are looking for when the tests are running in the pipeline so make sure you use the expect keyword this is more like a test setup don't rely on this when you're writing the test so we have covered the locator picker we have covered the asset visibility and this is the asserting text. So let's, let's try that now. So on my right, you can still see the screen. I'm going to select the assert text and it says, when I clicked on this text, it says assert that the element contains this text and I've said yes. So now it has generated a new expect statement for me. So I can copy that and put it back into the test. First it's asking me to fix the test. So I'm going to fix that test, get rid of the error and add a new line. So our first expect is checking that this is visible. Our next expect is checking if it contains a correct text. Okay, so let's play it now. It also tells you how much time it took to verify that. So for example, if you were just checking for the visible, your test would be slightly slower because you're taking 36 milliseconds on that line. But if you use the two contain text expect, which basically does the same thing, your test would be slightly faster. So this is an advanced topic, which is called test op optimization. Uh, but in, in this, you can basically understand how you do it. Uh, okay, 
So we have covered the text. The last one is asset value. So I'm going to click on that asset value and click on, let's see. So th this is an input box. So inputs have the values. So it can have like a value on or off. So here it says not to be checked. So if I click on it, now it says check. So because I have not, uh, one second, so page.locator, so I've copied it and I've done a check. Now, previously it was not checked. Basically there was nothing in the box. So let's, let's just copy that line first so that you can understand what's going on. So initially we are checking that this is not selected. This to do item is not selected. Let's run the test that passed. So that item was not selected. Now, if I select that item, how do I select this item? As you can see, when I clicked on it, the record is on. So it generated the next line, which is this line, which does a check for me. So now it will do the check, but I need to verify that it is checked this time. So I can literally copy this expect and change the dot not and remove that basically so that it will be to be checked. So let's run the test. And as you can see, the test passed just to show you that it would have failed because we should do red green refactor. I'm going to put the not back and this time the test should fail on this line. So it says waiting and now that has failed and you can see the expected was not checked and the receive was checked. So that's the basic uh, basis of the playwright code generation. I hope you enjoyed it. These are the main features that you can use. Expect, item locator, check for visibility and check for text. Those are the main core items. There are other things over here as well, like you can copy the whole text from here like I was doing. But when I'm writing a test, I only need to generate bits of it, not the whole test, because I want my test to be clean. And if you are using patterns like page object model, some of this code might need to go into the library. So hope you enjoyed that. I hope you followed the steps along with me. If not, go back to the beginning of the video. Do it yourself as well. It's very straightforward, as you can see. Uh, you don't have to really look into the documentation to understand what selectors you're going to use for the test or what are the elements on the page. The playwright does it for you. So, I mean, it's a no brainer. When you're writing tests, make sure you use the code generation feature. We will be covering some more advanced topics from now onwards. So do make sure you continue watching the videos. I'll see you in the next lecture.